Assalamu alaikum students welcome to my youtube channel and welcome to general microbiology lecture series in previous lecture we discussed about mesosomes bacterial nucleus ribosomes and glycocalyx structure in this lecture we will learn about endospore formation in bacteria moreover some important questions regarding this lecture are also added in the end of the slides sporulation or sporogenesis what is sporulation or sporogenesis the production of endospores by bacteria is called as sporulation simply the formation of endospores or spores is generally called as sporulation or sporogenesis if we look at this figure suppose there is a spore endospore formed by a bacteria so this formation of the endospore will be called as a sporulation now what is spore germination spore germination it is a process of conversion of spores to vegetative cell is called as spore germination so here in this figure a free endospore is germinated again into a complete bacterial cell in the presence of favorable condition so this conversion of the free spore into a again vegetative bacterial cell the whole process will be called as a spore germination endospores what are the endospores and the most important question why do bacteria need to form endospores actually in bacterial species spore is a resistant form and help bacterial cells to protect them in adverse harsh or unfavorable conditions means bacteria do not produce endospores in normal conditions however produce or form endospores only when there is a limitation of nutrients or extreme environmental conditions such as temperature ph and may also include some other unfavorable conditions a spore may be classified as endospores or exospores what are the endospores endospores which are produced inside a cell and these type of the spore are considered as protective spores means these help the bacteria to protect against the unfavorable conditions exospores exospores are produced external to the cell and these are considered as reproductive spores most of the fungi produce spores externally and they play a role in reproduction examples of bacteria producing endospores endospore formation usually occurs in gram positive bacteria endospores may survive for long period of time as dormant forms of bacteria among these bacteria Clostridium and Bacillus species are the most common genera for endospore producing capability. Some names of these bacterial species may include Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus anthracis, Clostridium botulinum and Clostridium perfringens. Some other species such as Bacillus cereus Clostridium tetani may also produce the endospores. Bacillus subtilis is mostly found in soil and the gastrointestinal tract of the humans and also found in marine organisms. It is also called as hay bacillus or grass bacillus. 
Bacillus subtilis is a rod shaped aerobic bacteria and highly motile. It is considered as a non pathogenic bacterium of the genus Bacillus. However, may cause infections in immunocompromised patients means with weak defense system. So if we compare Bacillus subtilis with Bacillus anthracis, Bacillus anthracis causes anthrax, a very dangerous respiratory disease. Moreover, Bacillus anthracis is a non-motile while Bacillus subtilis is a highly motile bacteria. Moreover, Clostridium botulinum and Clostridium perfringens are also gram-positive rod-shaped spore-forming pathogenic bacteria. Mostly these both bacteria are involved in food infections. Again, if we compare these two bacteria, Clostridium botulinum is a motile and Clostridium perfringens is a non-motile but can move through gliding motility means movement through attachment of surfaces. Characteristics of endospores Endospores are formed during unfavorable conditions and these type of these spores are considered as protective spores not the reproductive spores. Endospores make the bacterial cells to survive in harsh environmental conditions such as heat, dryness and harmful chemical agents. Endospores possess calcium dipicolinate and this is the reason endospores are highly thick in nature. These type of the spores may vary in size, shape and location within a bacterial cell. So based on the shape, these may be rounded, ellipsoidal or cylindrical in shape. While according to location, endospores may be terminal, subterminal or at the central position within a bacterial cell. Moreover, different features of the endospores may use for the identification of bacterial species producing the spores. A structure of an endospore An endospore is composed of several layers such as core, cortex, coat, spore wall, spore shell, and exosporum. So the structure of endospore is a highly complex in nature. To make a simplified structure to understand clearly you can see here a simple structure of an endospore. So an endospore possesses a central core surrounded by other layers. So here you can see this is a core also called as central area which contains nuclear material means DNA, ribosomes and low levels of enzymes of the parent cell or mother cell. Now this is the cortex. The covering that immediately surrounds the core is called as cortex layer. It is composed of peptoglycan layer. After this, there is a spore cord. A spore cord, it is a structure outside the cortex which consists of one or few protein layers. Now, this is the exosporum. The outermost layer encloses the spore and it consists of one or few loose and thin layers. Endospore shapes The shape and location of an endospore depends on a type of a bacterial cell. Different types of bacteria possess different shapes of bacteria. 
here you can see such as ovoid shaped endospores these are oval shaped endospores at the central position in a bacterial cell bacillus cereus is an example of a bacterium with oval shaped endospores at the central position now the rounded shaped endospores means the round shaped spores at the terminal position in a bacterial cell means the spores found on one side of the bacterial cell clostridium tetani is a bacterium that produces round shaped spores at the terminal position you can see here here is the formation of the endospores at the terminal position again the oval shape endospores but at the subterminal position in a bacterial cell clostridium subterminal bacterium is the best example of producing oval shaped endospores at the subterminal position means the endospore formed not completely on a center in a bacterium and not at the terminal position but it is formed at the subterminal position endospore formation process also called as sporulation or sporogenesis process so here this is a vegetative growth cycle of a bacterium in normal conditions means during favorable or suitable conditions bacteria grow normally now this is the first stage store of endospore formation during unfavorable conditions here in stage 2 there is a formation of pre spore and start of separation of pre spore means septum from its mother cell this is the third stage which consists of engulfment stage means at this stage the membrane of the mother cell migrates or shifts around the newly formed spore and enclosing it within the cytoplasm stage 4 where formation of cortex layer occurs so what is the cortex layer already discussed in previous slides that it is a layer after the central core stage 5 in this stage there is a formation of a spore core now stage 6 and 7 where final maturation of an endospore occurs and also there is a cell lysis means all the external material from mother cell lies completely and a free endospore comes out in environment and remains for long period of time again when there the favorable conditions come back the germination of endospores starts and a bacterial cell will grow normally cyst so what is a the cyst there are certain other structures found in some bacteria which also help the bacteria to survive in unfavorable conditions like as endospores so let's first discuss what is a cyst and what is the major difference between the cyst and endospore a cyst is a dormant thick walled structure found in some specific bacteria it is also resistant to drying 
and it develops from a vegetative cell and later on germinate under suitable conditions. It doesn't have high heat resistance and it differs in structure and chemical composition from endospores. So if we look these two statements, then there's a much difference between the cyst and endospores. Number one, cyst does not have a high heat resistance and number two, it also differs in structure and chemical composition from the endospores. Azotobacterium is the best example of a bacterium producing cyst. Some other bacteria such as Dilobebrio and Myxococcus species may also produce the cyst. Now some questions related to this lecture. Number one, what is spore germination? What is difference between endospores and exospores? Why are endospores called as protective spores? Give some examples of endospore producing bacteria. What is the name of a chemical compound in endospore structure? responsible for thickness of an endospore. What is spore cortex? What is difference between spore core and central core? Give any example of a bacterium with all shaped spores at the central position. Give any example of a bacterium with round shaped spores at the terminal position. What is difference between bacterial endospore and cyst? Give some examples of bacteria producing cyst. Now here this is the one of the MCQ's question that which of the following bacteria are not motile? The options are option A a the bacillus subtilis, B clostridium tetany, C bacillus anthracis, and the option D is the all of these. So you have to choose which one of the correct answer.